can I say some advice? Yeah. Just be careful. That's all I'm gonna say. How was that supposed to be helpful at all? Like, if she really wants to help, like, spill the tea, fam. <laughs> Welcome to talking about episode 8 of Peter's season of The Bachelor. Ah! <laughs> this week was hometowns. I would say they were not successful. So first we go to Hannah Ann's hometown. She pretty much tells Peter that her dad wants her to marry a tough guy. So they go axe throwing. Oh. <laughs> How did that not stick? Perhaps not his best skill. He hits the target. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to t -t 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 Target! <laughs> and he actually did write her a list of all the things he loves about her. The fact that he did sit down and like write those things out is very sweet. But when they go home, her father looks pissed from the start. That face! Oh my gosh. She brought Peter, which is new and exciting, I guess. She brought Peter with her, which is new and exciting, I guess. Peter talks to Hannah Ann's mom. He tells her that he's falling for Hannah Ann. And the mom pretty much warns Peter that her husband is not going to be an easy conversation. <laughs> Which was true. The father asks Peter about the other girls versus Hannah Ann. What he sees with her versus the other girls. And Peter says that he's falling in love with Hannah Ann and the dad said he wasn't expecting for Peter to say that. And he says he'd rather Peter not say that to Hannah Ann unless he's like wholeheartedly sure on that. And I think what the dad meant by saying that was like, don't tell Hannah that unless you're gonna propose to her. And I was like, Peter, you know what? Just don't say it. Usually it's the contestants saying that because bachelors and bachelorettes of the past have gotten heat for saying I love you to more than one person and you're on a pretty good track record here. And he tells Hannah and he's falling in love with her anyways. Sir, I would be careful. This father is apparently very skilled with an ax. And Hannah Ann says that she's in love with him. Peter didn't ask for Hannah Ann's father's blessing or any of the parents actually and I'm wondering if that's like a thing that bachelors are gonna stop doing because a lot of parents have said call me back if my kid wins pretty much and I'm wondering if he forgot or if he's gonna wait to call later I mean to be fair Hannah Ann's dad would have definitely said no next stop Iowa Kelsey set up a really cute date for them to go stomp wine and like do a wine tasting slash crafting thing. Peter compares their relationship to wine. It's sweet with some spice. It's the perfect blend. There's a good aftertaste. Who's writing this and telling this boy to talk like that? But I feel like they kind of do have a good relationship. Like Kelsey is very calm and low key. And I feel like Peter's a little more high energy than her, but they seem to click really well. Peter's like shocked by crab ragoon. I literally have no idea what this food is, but like they announce it. They're like, this is one of Kelsey's favorite. And Peter, freaks out. Apparently they discussed this on their first date. These are crab ragoon. <laughs> He's never had crab ragoon. We, we talked about this on our first date. Peter with the mom. Uh, uh, yikes, you've got parents after you. Kelsey's mom is like, don't break my girl's heart. Do you understand? And I was like, oh, he understands, but also I think he's going to. Don't break my girl's heart. Do you understand? I do. I 100% do. Peter tells her his heart is falling and I feel like he knew he was gonna keep Hannah in. So like, I don't know why he would say that, really. Peter, pull it together. You have to stop telling these girls that you love them. Was it Ben H who told both of his final girls that he loved them? Uh, I can't remember. A little ASMR action. But whoever it was got slammed for it. So if I was the person running this whole thing, I'd be very careful. And Peter doesn't seem to be quite careful about who he's telling he loves. We go see Madison's hometown in Alabama. Her dad is an Auburn basketball coach. How did I not pick up on this beforehand? The head coach comes in and tells Maddie congratulations on making the final four, which I thought was funny. And then he has them do some ball handling drills. Madison is like schooling Peter and it's so funny. I love it. She's like, I'm real excited to kick his butt. And she does, amazing. <laughs> 
<laughs> the review of the names before they go into the house was so funny. Mom, Tanya, Tanya. Chad, yep. Dad, Mallory, Mallory, and Mary Michael. And Mary Michael. She's like, okay, all 50 million of my family members are here, so you're gonna need to know the names. Peter talks to the dad, and this dad is pretty much the same as Hannah Ann's dad, and I don't know any of the dad's names. But he says, how can you assure me that your like heart is genuine in this? How can you come tell me that you like are falling in love with my daughter when you have these other girls around? Which is valid, but like, like they know this is gonna be near impossible for Peter to answer and not sound like a douchebag. And Peter's just like, well, that's how I feel. I'm like, oh, like not a good answer, but like really what else could he say? Madison doesn't say that she loves him because she's kind of feeling more, I think, conscious about the fact that there are other girls left that he has really strong connections with too. But then Peter in his interview <laughs> says that he loves Madison. Like, like that's the most sure thing we've heard over the past two weeks is that Peter loves Madison and he has said that multiple times and he says they're on the same page but she's over here saying she's concerned so I feel like y'all need to talk on to Victoria in Virginia oh boy they do vintage dress up picture things and that's cute but nobody really wants to talk about that let's first go to the concert where Hunter Hayes is performing first of all this is not the Hunter Hayes I remember from when I was in high school because he looks so different I was like this is not Hunter Hayes. Also, when they were panning up, like they're just panning up so slowly on who's performing, and I guess they're doing that because Hunter Hayes is a big name. But like, I was like, oh my gosh, is it Chase Rice? Nope, it's not Victoria's ex. It's Peters who shows up and is like, hey, I need to talk to you. Her face is blurred out, but I'm sorry, we have social media. Everybody knew within five minutes who this girl was. Peters like Marissa, and everybody's like, who's Marissa? It's like the moment in Frozen 2 when Olaf is like Samantha, and I was like, okay, can we get it? <laughs> Samantha? He says it's a pleasant surprise. I was like, oh, is it? She said, I'm sorry, excuse me. She says, be careful, that's all I'm gonna say. But then she kind of hints that it's Victoria's fault that she and Victoria are not friends anymore. And she pretty much says, you shouldn't be in a relationship with Victoria, but gives no details. How was that supposed to be helpful at all? Like, if she really wants to help, like, spill the tea, fam. Like. What are we talking about here with this cryptic, like, oh, like, I don't think this is good. And then, you know, flip over to Victoria, who's like, this was such a great day, I feel so great, blah, blah, blah. And then when Peter shows up, she realizes right away that something's wrong. Why is something always wrong with these two? Victoria, I think, overreacts, has her regular weekly breakdown. To be fair, I really do think he could have waited till after meeting the family to talk about this. What Marissa said didn't seem like such a huge deal that he had to talk talk about it before meeting her family. Like, why not go in, just like have a nice time, focus on that, and then talk about it afterwards, like most people do. And then Peter asks, if she's fought for anything in her life. That was a little below the belt, so she gets up and walks away. I can't. I'm so done. I'm sorry. Get like, I can't. I'm so serious. Victoria tells him that she was going to say that she was falling in love with him, which is pretty much kind of saying it, and says that Peter's taking Marissa's side, which he says he's not. And then she's like, why are you still here? And he's like, are you serious? Like, I just, that was such an overreaction. Like, are you really going to break up about this? Like, she didn't, Marissa didn't even really pin anything on her. Like, it, there's no concrete evidence. I'm getting worked up, okay. I mean, it's kind of true that Peter's the only one fighting in this relationship. I feel like Victoria's constantly walking away from him. It's always him chasing after her. And then he's hugging her and says like, you deserve to be loved, don't push that away. And I thought they'd just broken up. I was like, did we miss part of this conversation? Because it seems like he just broke up with her or she broke up with him because I don't really know what's going on. That was a bad fight. Like that was a bad fight. Doing the people. Woo! Oh! He needs some milk. He leaves and then Victoria's family comes out to comfort Victoria. So like at this point, I'm really thinking it's over. Like she's sobbing. I was like, I, I guess we're down to three, like no rose ceremony, question mark. But then she shows up at his room the next day and Peter says he hated what happened last night. I mean, obviously both of them did. Like it's not like they wanted that to happen, but he feels like she doesn't want him to love her. And like his whole thing this season that he said like 50 million times is that he wants somebody to want him as much as he wants them. Like honestly, I feel like Peter's fears here are valid. Every time they've gotten in kind of a weird situation or a bad argument, she has like got up, walked away. What does that say about their relationship after The Bachelor if they end up together? Victoria says that she's falling for him and that she had to tell him and then pretty much asks him if he wants 
wants to break up with her and he says he can't decide right now. They hug goodbye but did not kiss. I thought he'd go back and meet the family but he doesn't. So the rose ceremony comes up and Victoria thinks she's getting sent home and I do too. He calls out Hannah Ann and Madison. Obviously there are two front runners. And then Victoria. He must really like her. If he's going to choose her after two dates of pretty much just fighting. I love you bitch. I ain't gonna never stop loving you. I obviously, like, I never really pegged Kelsey as the winner of this whole thing, but she was really blindsided by that. But Peter says that, like, he appreciates Kelsey saying that she loves him, but he's not there. And I was like, that sucks. But Peter comes back, says he's sure his wife is one of these three girls, and that they're headed to Australia. So that's the end. Next week is Fantasy Sweet Week, and he has said pretty much that he loves all three of them. Madison is apparently going to give him an ultimatum that if he sleeps with the other two girls, she's going to be going home. But apparently Peter's already slept with somebody. What will you learn? What will you learn? That your actions have come! Victoria's dad being like, I'm not calling him Pilot Pete. Same. I think Hannah Ann's gonna win. I think Madison is going to be the next Bachelorette. TBD. <sighs> That's all I really have about this one. How many episodes do we have left? Fantasy Suites, and then Peter's Hometowns, and then the one last date finale thing, right? <laughs> Stay tuned for whatever ridiculous thing is coming next. Do you think that Peter got someone pregnant? My name's Caitlin. Thanks for watching. Bye!